Let's talk about the real reasons the U.S. has been amping up aggressions against China. Now, stick with me through this, because what you're going to hear is not uh, your norm from a left wing or a right wing person. This is going to be a blend because both sides have some points and both sides are very wrong on certain things. So let's go ahead and get started. The truth about why we're ramping up our aggressions with China. So recently, the U.S. has been engaging in a series of tit for tat, passive aggressive actions with China. We've ordered them to close their consulate in Houston. They responded by closing a U.S. consulate in one of their cities. We sanctioned them over the treatment of Muslims in the Uyghur region of the country. We've been threatening more sanctions in regards to the protests in Hong Kong and have been blaming them for the China flu. And now we've accused them of espionage. This, on top of the trade war, accusations they manipulate their currency and steal our intellectual property. But what this really boils down to is we are mad. We are fundamentally upset China is unwilling to engage in laissez-faire capitalism. What we want is the ability to go into their nation of 1.7 billion people and make money off their market. Now, China isn't letting us do it. They do not adhere to hypercapitalism. They instead have much more of a mixed economy of socialism and capitalism. They won't open up their markets to allow for the wealthy capitalists to come in, make a bunch of money, and run offshore with it, like what they're allowed to do here in the U.S. We have a nation that is up for sale to the highest bidder. Everything in this nation is for sale, from real estate to businesses to politicians. In fact, the Chinese have been able to buy many iconic American brands, such as AMC Theaters, Legendary Entertainment, Smithfield Foods, g and &E Appliances, the Waldorf Astoria, Riot Games, the Brooklyn Nets and their arena, the Barclays Center, and Motorola. And those are just the companies they outright or nearly outright own. There are thousands upon thousands of companies in which the Chinese have significant investments. On top of that, there are another batch of thousands of companies who rely on China, allowing them to manufacture in their nation for cheap labor and cheap materials. So they need to remain on the good, in the good graces with the Chinese and have no intention of picking a fight with them. And those are just the businesses. The Chinese have been the biggest foreign purchaser of U.S. real estate for nearly a decade, buying up homes and putting them into the rental market. Of the 284,000 properties sold to foreign buyers in 2018, roughly 40,000 or 15 percent were bought by Chinese nationals, and they've been doing that year after year. This on top of China owing, owning hundreds of thousands of acres of U.S. farmland. You can imagine how this would influence U.S. politics. Though Chinese nationals cannot directly contribute to politicians, American companies can if the company is owned by Chinese nationals. In fact, after the Supreme Court's Citizens United ruling, money from U.S. subsidies of foreign-owned companies have flooded hundreds of millions, if not billions, into political action committees over the last decade. Everyone in the country, Republican or Democrat, should be against Citizens United if you care anything at all about this nation. China isn't breaking the rules. We put our nation up for sale because the ultra capitalists in this country don't actually care about America. They instead only care about getting richer. They will sell parcels of land, businesses and buildings to the highest bidder. And oftentimes that highest bidder comes from China. So the thing is, the Chinese haven't put China up for sale. What China is doing to us, we cannot do to them. Americans cannot go into China, buy real estate, land, or businesses to make a profit. China doesn't even let Americans freely set up businesses to make money off their 1.7 billion people without some really tight controls and an ultimate exit strategy to get us out of their markets after a period of time. So this is where their socialism starts to show. They say China is for the Chinese. Imagine that. Now, this is where the trade war comes in. No one really cares that China has been our biggest buyer, and they don't really care about the trade deficit. America is not in the business of exports, and we're not going to be anytime soon. We're not really realistically thinking we can get China to buy the same amount of our expensive and limited number of American-made products as we do their low-cost Chinese products. That isn't going to happen. And that's not really what Trump nor Republicans are going after China, and they, that's not what they really want either. What they want is access to buying up China and they're trying to muscle and bully China into it.
So let's talk about how the trade war plays into us and into all of this. They have us in a little bit of a checkmate, which is why we're seeing our anti-China rhetoric on the rise and why we're now escalating tensions over the virus, Hong Kong and the Uyghur Wahhabist Muslims. And by the way, a side note on that, there have been uh, an interesting rise in Wahhabism, which is a form of extreme Islam rising up in nearly every port China intends to build its Belt and Road Initiative. Coincidence? I think not, but that's a different segment for a different day that I promise I will bring you. So because China sells Americans tons of products, U.S. dollars end up in the hands of the Chinese because we buy products with dollars, right? Not renminbi. So dollars cannot be spent in China. So the Chinese come to the U.S. and they spend the dollars, naturally. Over the past 40 years of China being the largest manufacturing nation, China has accumulated a lot of dollars by selling us their low-cost Chinese-made goods. Then as they invest in U.S. assets, they end up gaining even more dollars. Then they start to buy up our debt because they have all these dollars. They're like, oh, you're in debt? Well, gee, we just happen to have all these dollars. Here you go. But be sure to pay us back. So because the Chinese have, have not been buying um, American goods, Americans don't end up with many renminbi. And even if we did, I mean, what could we do with them? With China's protectionist, China first attitude, we're not able to go and buy China the way they've been able to come and buy us. All we can do with their currency is put it back in the market and exchange it for dollars. And because we're putting their currency back into the market, what that does is keep the value of the renminbi low. Now, this is where some of the currency manipulation claims come in. China has an interest in keeping the renminbi low and the U.S. dollar high. We are their largest buyer, so it's in their best interest to keep as many dollars as they possibly can out of the market in order to keep the dollar value high so that we can buy lots of their low-cost goods. And when Chinese manufacturers accumulate these dollars, they need to exchange them for renminbi in order to pay their workers and their bills. So what the Chinese government does is rather than allowing these Chinese manufacturers to exchange the dollars in the market for renminbi, the Chinese government instead prints renminbi to give to their businesses and buys up the dollars themselves. This keeps their currency low because when you print it, there tends to be a lot of it in circulation. And also this keeps the dollar out of the market, keeping the value of it very high. And that's when the Chinese government takes all of those dollars that they're storing up and they buy up U.S. debts and assets, which only makes them more money. So you can see this is a vicious and dangerous cycle. It means slowly but surely, China will own more and more of the U.S., be it in businesses, real estate, or debts. And because China has bought up or heavily invested in significant portions of the media business, such as our movie and sports industry, they've also bought the narrative. No athlete or celebrity will say anything negative about China, so as long as they want endorsements from companies with manufacturing plants in China, have a shot at a sports team that's bought or invested by China, or be in a big box office movie made by Legendary Entertainment or that plays in an AMC theater. So this is where I give Trump a little credit for bringing attention to the fact that we really do need to adopt an American first mentality. But attacking the trade deficit and now things like the virus, the Wahhabis and Hong Kong in an attempt to get them to open up their markets is a fool's errand. China has the upper hand on this. We cannot suddenly stop trade with them. We have a dwindling middle class, a growing lower class because our rich get richer, our poor get poorer, hyper capitalism that the Americans are reliant on these low cost goods. China knows this, which is why they are largely ignoring our demands. They also know that there is no way in hell they're putting their nation up for sale to the hyper-capitalist Americans wanting to go in and siphon their resources. Instead, they're playing the long game of chess, and they're making progress. They will not remain a manufacturing nation for too much longer. As they increase their wealth, like all nations before them, they will transition away from manufacturing towards more tech. They have been heavily investing in Africa, knowing nations on that continent will be replacing them in this regard. And when they do, they will have huge investments in their success and will have built deep friendships and alliances. At that point, they won't need us as their big client because they won't be selling anything. And the African nations who will be selling low-cost goods will be much more interested in China's massive population than our dwindling one. Meanwhile, the U.S. will become the next France or Spain. You know, once a great conquering nation, now just a fun place to visit. Now, all China needs to do is to wait.
Over the past 40 years, the U.S. has gone from being extremely important to China's economy to only kind of important, and that lessens every and each year. They just need to placate us long enough for them to fully transition out of being a manufacturing nation of low-cost goods, which is probably only about 10 years out, maybe less. They're moving pretty fast. And when they're done with their transition and no longer need us as a big buyer, there's a real possibility they take all those dollars they've been accumulating and will suddenly offload them, crashing our economy. Suddenly, trillions of U.S. dollars not in circulation will be in circulation and we'll see mass inflation and a sharp increase in poverty because we were so reliant on cheap imports. When our dollar is suddenly worth very little, those cheap imports suddenly become not so cheap. So what's the solution? The silly trade war and tit-for-tat escalation into a cold war certainly isn't it. We need to remain friendly with China so in 10 years they don't decide to crush us in an act of economic warfare. What has saved the old guard in Europe is being friends with the rising U.S. world power, not enemies. But we do need to wake up a bit to this reality and start moving more into an America first mentality. It's not wise for the left to scoff at this idea simply because it's coming from Trump's mouth. We need to realize this is a real threat. We don't need to demonize China and we certainly don't need to pick a fight with them, but we need to adopt new rules. And this is going to be painful for the left and the right. The left will need to understand that an America first mentality and limiting Chinese and really all foreign investments in our assets is not racist. And the right needs to be comfortable with putting restrictions and regulations on our free market that don't allow foreign nationals or foreign nations free reign. As an American citizen, you cannot easily go and buy real estate, businesses, or other types of investments in many foreign nations around the world. It's normal for nations to protect themselves. Latin America has unfortunately learned this the hard way. Their countries are devastated from the West taking advantage of them and turning them into banana republics. And we're only a few short steps away from it happening to us. We're getting a dose of our own medicine, and turning this ship around is going to require a serious paradigm shift from legislators and voters on both sides of the aisle. We need to stop allowing foreigners to buy us up, even if they are the highest bidder. We need to end Citizens United that allows foreigners to donate endless amounts of money to our politicians through their U.S. subsidies and PACs. We need to start manufacturing essential goods here on our soil. You know, we can actually kind of start with some PPE gear, masks, and pharmaceuticals. Basically, guys... We need to be America first. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel. I will have more on this topic coming your way, but I really appreciate you watching. Please also sign up for my email newsletter. The link is down below in the description. Uh, that is just in case, you know, here we're always under threat of being censored or deplatformed. So if I can communicate with you through my email newsletter, then I'll have direct access to you no matter what might happen in the future. Thank you guys again. Thank you so much for watching.